hear me now? Can you hear me now? Is it working? Is the volume working? Oh, I should have checked it before I even. Is the volume working? Mate. Did you say what? Oh, yes. Is it working? Oh, yes. yes. Is it working? <gasps> yes! Okay. <sighs> Guys, I promise I'm going to get this technical thing like figured out. I promise. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Thank you everybody for managing to come over to this one. Oh my gosh. The technical difficulties are insane. So I'm actually really excited. I wasn't going to share this with you guys today, but, um, Oh, and the questions that you asked before, uh, I will, if I don't get them to them today, if you could please repeat your question, that way it's easier for me to come back to. I would really appreciate that. But if you don't, I can always go back to that previous video and um, check out those questions and answer them um, in an individual way uh, opposed to on, on this live. It'll just help me out a lot. So if you can repeat your question, that would be great. If you, if you, uh, can't get your question over, I'll, I'll go take a peek with, of those um, later and I'll get back to you on answering those questions. Okay. But anyways, thank you so much for joining me today. A happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining me for my Tuesday live. Good evening. Welcome to my channel and my live where I'm going to be talking about this Friday's tutorial and give you the insight on the materials that I used. That way, if you want to prep beforehand, you absolutely can sort of, and I'll talk about that here in a second. But um, that that's the whole point of these Tuesday Lives is for me to talk more in depth about what tutorial I'm going to be releasing on Friday and give you some more behind the scenes, like picking the material and a little bit more of the story behind it, stuff that I can't include in the tutorial itself because it would just be too much, right? I, I cut this stuff out of that tutorial, but I still want to share it. And kind of give you guys a sneak peek too on what's coming. That way you can be prepared for it and ready for it. And I know I know a lot of people appreciate that a lot. Now, if you're brand new to my Tuesday lives, I do do a Q&A after I talk about all that fun stuff. So if you ask me a question in the chat, I'm not ignoring you. I promise. I'm just allowing myself to be right here for anyone that just wants the info of this week's tutorial. They can get that information and then cut off and leave and not have to worry about the Q&A session being intermixed into that. Sound good? So my moderator, Hannah, is incredible. Everybody say hi to Hannah. Hi, Hannah. So if you get a comment from Hannah or you see that Hannah is reaching out to you, she is my moderator and she will take your questions. And if she can answer them right off the bat, she will. Or she will get that question over to me. She will text it to me. I have my phone right here. That way at the end when I'm doing the Q&A session, I can just go through what she has messaged me and then um, not have to do that reading through which is just you watching me read the whole time, which ends up being a little bit awkward. I mean, if you want to stare at my face while I'm reading, you absolutely can in past videos, but I'm trying to eliminate that, get through questions a little bit faster, have it a little more organized. So Hannah is incredible. Thank you so much, Hannah. All right. Uh, talked about the structure of the video, explaining blah, blah, blah. Thank you so much for making it over. I apologize for the technical difficulty. Uh, what I was going to be sharing with you, what I mentioned at the beginning is I am getting, I am getting a studio constructed in my backyard. <laughs> and what I'm hoping for by having the studio constructed is that I can place things like my microphone and like my computer, and I don't have to move them around. What I end up having to do is moving all my stuff about to make room for everything I have going on. And then when I reconnect things, things just happen to not work properly for me. And I run into this often and I'm like, you know what? It'll be great to have a space where I don't have to move anything. It can just be mine and I have enough elbow room to do stuff. So I'm really excited about that. And I will be updating you on when that gets started and the process of that being constructed over on my vlog channel. It's called, called Behind the Scenes with Tiffany. If you go on my YouTube channel, you'll see um, under, I think it's under different um, channels. 
I have it linked there and I'm going to be doing some more vlog showing the construction of that. It'll be really cool. So that is coming. Whew. All right. So if you saw the picture of my thumbnail, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that I had it in me to create that tapestry. That was so much fun creating this tapestry and just having fun exploring all these different stitches, seeing how they worked together with each other and having fun just with colors. And if you're unfamiliar, I don't have the tapestry with me. I actually shipped it to Oregon to get photographed by a, a family family friend. She's also my photographer, my business manager, Lisa, giving you a shout out for being incredible and helping me with my channel, helping me with my business and making everything just look so much better. Um, so let's see. There we go. We will be making this on Friday. She has it. It's in Oregon right now, but that is what we are making. It's called the seven stitch wall tapestry. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. I wonder if I can zoom in. Zoom in. Check that out. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so much fun. And it's so pretty. Seriously, just the best time. There's seven different stitches, uh, multiple different sections. And I really found as I was making this tapestry that each, each section, I just wanted to, like I thought of all these other projects that I could do while I made it. And it was inspiring and just so much fun. Uh, and I can't wait to be able to share that with you on, on Friday. So Let's go over what materials I used for this tutorial. Where am I going to start? I think I will start with yarn. Let's start with yarn, shall we? And again, if you have any questions in regards to the kit, uh, to the project, in regards to materials and like anything that I'm talking about for this tutorial coming up on Friday, feel free to mention it in the uh, chat. And I promise that I will get to it when we get to the Q&A session. Also, if you are a member to my channel, use your emojis. Now is the prime time example for you to use your exclusive emojis. And just go crazy with them. Have fun. <laughs> All right. So yarn for this project. You want a yarn that is sturdy and one that is non-textured. So the yarn that I used specifically, and I used this because I really loved the colors, was Loops and Threads Impeccable in the color Erin. So you got that cream color, loops and threads, impeccable in the color gold, golden. Yeah, gold, gold. Oh, thank you, PJ. You are incredible. Love you, girl. Loops and thread. You saying hi, Bella? Loops and threads in the color pale gray. But then I throw it for a loop and I go and I throw a wool in there. I got Lion Brand Wool Ease, and this is the color Flint. Now, these three yarns right here are 100% acrylic. This yarn right here is 80% acrylic, 20% wool. They are all a size 4 weight worsted medium, Aran 10-12 ply, or 8 WPI sized yarn. Now, I would compare these guys to an I Love This Yarn, to a Vanna's Choice, to a, a really any of the Red Hearts would work. And then this guy's the same size. It's just a little bit of different texture. I want to have fun with mixing different textures together and, and seeing how that turned out. And it was pretty cool. It, it was really neat. I think the next time that I would make another wall tapestry, I would probably utilize maybe a, a fur yarn or a velvet yarn or, you know, something really crazy and just really intermix some fun things together. Maybe even mesh together uh, different size yarns, like working with a size three, then a size six, and then, you know, something in between there. That would be a lot of fun too. Just having a lot of fun. It's very artistic. Wall tapestries are very artistic. All right. So this yarn right here, I bought everything at Michael's. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I really love Michael's. I think they're easy to access. Their yarn is really pretty. Their colors of their 
impeccable yarn. There's a vast um, different color and variety. I really enjoy using it. And their yarn amounts aren't crazy, so there's not a lot of waste left over at the end of the project um, or your projects. There is technically enough yarn, though, to make more than one. <laughs> If you want to, which you might find that you want to because it's just so much fun. All right. So that is the yarn. You will also need. Now, this was interesting. So I got my hands on a size G7. You see? It's a G7, I promise. <laughs> it's a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook or a G7, which was really interesting to play with because, because usually you think of a G as a G6 or a 4 millimeter or 4.25 millimeter. And so when I saw G, I was like, oh, it's a G6. And then I looked a little closer at this hook and I was like, oh, it's a seven. That's pretty cool. So got the G7, a yarn needle or tapestry needle. There's going to be a lot of ends to weave in because we're doing a lot of color changes. Let me bring this back up. A lot of color changes, a lot of pattern transitions. So a lot of ends to be woven in. And then I think this is the last, this, okay, this and like scissors. You need scissors, but I didn't put that on my table. Um, 12 inch dowel rod. You pick if you want it to be wood or plastic. I'm going to let that be up to you. This was a very natural looking one. I find it. I found it at Michaels.com. I don't know if they have this in store, but I found it's pretty easy to find on Michaels.com. It has the pre-drilled little holes in the sides. Now, you need to have a dowel rod that is at least 12 inches wide. Otherwise, the project won't fit on it. Now, it can be longer but nothing shorter than 12 inches wide. And it doesn't matter how thick it is. That that doesn't make any difference. Okay. So that piece right there. So cool. Now, this is going to be March's subscription box or kit box that I'm going to have on my website. So if you want to use the exact same materials that I did to make mine, let me actually show you. So there's a little bit closer, actually feel the texture. Let's see if I can go. These gorgeous pictures she took. Oh, Lisa, they look great. Oh, isn't that so pretty? You're making this. You are making this on Friday. You be ready. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Okay. So on my website, crochetwithtiffany.com, this just went up for sale yesterday. Okay. So when you open the box, oh, in the box. You will get the pattern. You will get all of the yarn that you will need for the project. The crochet hook, which is a G7, the yarn needle, and one of these natural looking dowel rods. You'll get all of that. Sweet. Now I have noticed put that on the side. This is going to be my third kit box. My last two ended up selling out before the tutorial even aired. So if you want to get your hands on exactly what I used, you might want to hop over to my website after this video and get your hands on a kit box because what I ran into, and I don't know if you have noticed this at all, but there is a yarn shortage out there. I actually had quite the challenge of finding this yarn after I picked it up. So you may find it a little challenging to find this yarn and some of the other colors you may or may not be able to find. So if you don't want to worry about it, I would 
recommend just getting my kit because I have everything ready for you and you don't have to worry if there's that yarn in stock, uh, hunting it, finding it, or you can absolutely just use your own materials. But I have definitely been feeling the whole yarn shortage sting a bit. Um, I wanted to let you guys know I have restocked the boho kit baskets on my website. It, they're limited supply because, again, I've been um, running into that yarn shortage problem, but I was able to get enough to restock some of the kits. So get over to my website and make sure you get your hands on one before they are gone. Sound good? Ah, I'm so excited. This was such a fun project. And you're going to love this. This is an intermediate level crochet project. Um, there is a lot going on in the project. I go through, like I mentioned, the seven different stitches. Some of them are definitely labeled an intermediate level crochet stitch. Uh, and then I'm going through, I think that there's two sections where they're stranding. There is color changes. Uh transitions and I just want, and I'm moving quickly through the video. I, I'm not going slow. I, I'm not treating it as a absolute beginner video. I'm treating it more as an intermediate video where, yes, I will show you how to do stitches uh, just to make sure that you have a grasp on what's going on, but I don't go super slow. Now you're absolutely welcome to watch the video if you're an absolute beginner or uh, even an advanced beginner and you can slow down my video. I mentioned this last week. Don't know if you caught that, but you have the power to control how fast or how slow your YouTube video is. Not sure if you knew that. If you go to the bottom corner, you'll see a little gear or if you're watching from a phone or tablet, it's the three buttons that are in the top corner. You push on that, then select playback speed and you can slow the video down. And it may seem to be in slow motion, but you're able to actually slow it down. So hopefully the video goes slow enough for you to follow if it's going a little too quickly for you. So a little tip right there. Super excited. Oh, guys, this project, I am super, super proud of this project. It was just so, so awesome. It, and I can't wait to make many, many more. And I, I can't wait to show you how to make it as well. So that is Friday's tutorial. Is there anything else I wanted to mention? I think that's everything. Now, if you have asked any questions in the chat, Hannah has been sending over some pictures, some screenshots. So I already have some ready to go and answer. I do have an email. Somebody emailed me and are asking for some help. And so I'm going to answer that question first. And then I'm going to get to your questions. Now, if you have a ton of questions and you're asking more than three questions in the chat, I might have to limit it just so I have enough time to get to everybody's question, uh, because I do have to end this live at eight o'clock. So that way I can get to family time. So just give you a heads up. If I don't get to all of your questions, I will just make sure that I, or just make sure I see you next week on the next live and I will help you there. Or you can always get a hold of me on, or at my email, contact me through social media. You could also join my membership and just join me with my crafters gathering, which meets every Wednesday and every Saturday where I can see you, I can talk to you and you can ask your question directly to me. It's a great time. I love these. I love these people that are in this crackers gathering. We have just this incredible community where we just have a great time and make, I always make sure I answer questions during that, that time period. So I think you would get great value from it. Okay. Let's go ahead and dive into questions. So my first question that I'm going to answer was from Melanie and she emailed me about color changes. Melanie was experiencing uh, one of those situations where she purchased a pattern or, or at least purchased all of the materials for a pattern. And uh, it claimed to be for absolute beginners, but she was struggling with it. So she asked about how to get through some of these color changes that they show in the pattern. So let me show you, Melanie, how I would address this project because you, uh, you mentioned in there that it's material sensitive, that they only provide enough material to make the actual item and nothing more. So it's easy to run out of material. So 
Um, I want to make sure. I think this is how they did that. So. Picture this. Now, I know this is small, but work with me here. Okay, so the project has like some image in within the project that is crocheted into the project and you're just doing color changes. Okay, and on the back, we're not doing stranding because we're not following the colors uh, with each other throughout the row. This is a form of intarsia, which is color change. It's a fancy word for color changing. But it's also doesn't have the messiness of cutting your yarn uh, each time you change colors. Okay. So I don't have the program anymore where I can flip the camera, but I'll do my best. <laughs> okay. So. Let me see how I'm going to do this. Okay. So you're using one color. You insert your crochet hook into the stitch space. Okay. You yarn over. You pull that color through. So there's the two loops on your crochet hook. Okay. When you go to do a color change, two loops of the, col the one color, Grab the next color you want to change to. Okay. Not taking phone calls right now. Okay. Grab the next color you want to change to. Yarn over that new color and pull the new color through the two loops on your crochet hook. And what that does. When you go to make the next stitch with the new color, so inserting crochet hook into the stitch space, yarning over, pulling through, yarn over, pull through for a single crochet. When you do that, the brown doesn't invade into the blue space and it creates a very clean color change based on that loop. So let me continue on. Okay, I'm back to where I was. All right, so I keep working. Single crochet, single crochet. Oh, I'm about to do a color change. So right between my color changes, I'll insert my crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, now I'm about to transition to the next color. So while I have two loops on my crochet hook, pick up the next color, yarn over that and pull that new color through the two loops on my crochet hook. And then I can keep going. And it's a very clean color change. Okay, so I hope that helps. Now. What I'm seeing her do is I have everything clean on this side, but on the other side, everything is left hanging. So I have like this one here. I have this one here. I have this ball here. Okay. I keep everything on the back side of the work for one side. Now let's say I move to the other side of the work. So I chain one, turn my work. Now this side of the work shows the strands hanging from where I left off. So I'm going to single crochet to the color change. Single, single, single. Okay, so I've just reached the spot where I'm about to do a color change. So... I have empty spot, empty spot, but there's a color change right there in the middle. I want to keep all of these strands on the same side. So I'm going to go ahead and single crochet or insert my crochet hook into that stitch space, yarn over, pull through. 
two loops on my crochet hook here, but I'm going to keep this yarn, my tail, my working yarn tail stays on the side of the work. So I'm going to go ahead and take it and I'm going to tuck it under my thumb or tuck it underneath. Grab the new color, lift it up, yarn over, pull through the two loops on my crochet hook. Okay. And then keep going, but keeping that strand on this side of the work. And we're just going to keep moving it up. We're just going to keep it moving up with us as we go. So I'm going to get to the next color change. Okay. So blue to brown. So inserting my crochet hook into the blue space, yarn over, pull through two loops, crochet hook. That blue stays on this side of the work. That's going to be the hardest thing to remember is keeping your working yarn on the same side of the work. Pick up the new color, yarn over and pull through the two blue loops and then single crochet. All right. And then what we're doing is we are keeping all of these working yarns on one side of the work. They will never be on the other side of the work. And they will move. Oops, I they will move up with us. So you won't get that overlapping that you'll see. And you won't have all the tails, the messy tails. Now, what I could see you working with, depending on the pattern, is maybe you have like three browns and they're just sticking out the bottom of your work as you're slowly making your way and just we, you know, going back and forth, back and forth. So my hope is that that rough example of what you do helps. But that is what I believe she did, Melanie, in that pattern was this technique. That way you're not wasting any yarn by carrying the yarn strands through the whole row. Because you, uh, you mentioned that the pattern was very material. Uh, they didn't have any extra yarn to mess, to mess with. Okay, cool. Melanie, if that did not answer your question or if you need a little more assistance, just go ahead and email me again. Or better yet, get a membership. Be in the crafters gathering. That would be awesome. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to go to the questions that Hannah has sent to me that you have asked in the chat. I'm so excited that so many of you have managed to make it here and be able to spend some time with me this Tuesday evening. I feel like the longer I do these, the more people show up to these and I just get really excited to see you. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Okay. So hope if using the half double crochet stitch, how wide and how long does it have to be for an E or right. I think you meant infinity scarf. Uh, so that's really personal preference for an infinity scarf. Uh, some people want it to just hang loose around their necks. Some people want it long enough so they can do that double back and come back for a, a thick cowl look. Um, I think there's a chart. What I would end up doing is going on Pinterest and looking for a, a chart, a scarf or infinity scarf or cowl chart. You can also Google that. Uh, I know that I have a chart that I found on Pinterest for scarf dimensions, and I like to refer to that. I think I'm going to, I on my website, I have a resources section, and I plan on filling that with a lot of charts, things that I find really helpful, that help me, that I use. And um, I'm going to repurpose them, make my own version, and put that on the website just for people to have some kind of reference. Because a lot of times it's just good to know dimensions. That way you can make sure you're making it right. And I totally get it. Um, so I think, Hope, what I would ask you is, yeah, do you want it to just be like a regular hanging infinity scarf? Or do you want the really long one that can double back and become a cowl? So make sh making sure it's long enough in that regard. And then how, how thick or how wide the scarf is. Is it thinner? Is it more, um, or is it basically thinner or is it thicker? 
and what you want to work with. So there's a couple different variables there that I, I would ask questions on, and that's completely up to you. And then is it for an adult or a child or a man or a woman? And then how tall are they? <laughs> so there's a lot of questions. Oh, Michelle, thank you so much. It's so great to see you. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much. All right. So hopefully that helps. I know I, I probably left you or I asked you more questions than you asked me. But all things to consider with your infinity scarf. And I would just kind of go off of yourself making make the scarf part. Well, I don't know how you're making it either. Are you making it like the scarf part and then joining the ends together? Or are you doing the circle and building the circle up? And if you're doing if you're doing the scarf part, I would just make the scarf wide and then I would place it around me and then see like gauge off of yourself. Um, and if you're doing just the circle that builds up on top of each other, do just the foundation row chain and then put it on yourself and see, is this wide enough to actually do what I want with it? So I would probably use yourself as a model or a gauge and then go from there. Okay. Uh, book fanatic. What's your favorite hook and why? Ooh, so that seems like it would be a very easy question, but I could totally make that super complicated. <laughs> so my favorite crochet hook is um, the brand that's my favorite is Boy, B-O-Y-E. Um, it's just what I started with and it works really well for me. I like thinner crochet hooks working with them um, because I crochet with a pencil hold and I keep everything really, really tight. Um, though I do know of other individuals who need that ergonomic handle. They need a wider handle to be able to hold it, grip it. And I've noticed that a lot of knife holders find it um, more comfortable to have an ergonomic hook with, with a thicker handle. That's just an observation, not a necessary thing, but, um, I need a thinner hook. Me personally. I also prefer having um, this part of the hook. It's called the shaft part of the hook. I prefer that to be longer so that way I can... It just works better with my tension. It works better with my stitches. I feel like I can do more with it and it, I don't feel held back. Um, and if you're talking about size of the crochet hook, my favorite size of crochet hook is the H8 or five millimeter crochet hook. I seem to use that most often. I've noticed that very recently, not just recently, I've been noticing that that seems to be my favorite go-to hook is the H8 or five millimeter crochet hook, but that also depends on the project. See how I could totally just overcomplicate that? <laughs> <laughs> because like if I'm working, making stuffed animals, I need something thinner. I need an E or an F crochet hook or a 3.25 or 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. Uh, if I'm making a really big bulky blanket, my favorite I like to use is a six or yeah. Yeah. Six. I think that's a J. Yeah. I think a J is the six. So it depends on the project. It's, it's, it's so many things to depend, but I think my favorite hook is an H8 five millimeter crochet hook, boy, aluminum, just straight crochet hook. <laughs> All right. Um, Kimberly, what is the biggest hook you have used? Oh my goodness. So I'll show you. It's a big one. Hi, baby girl. All right. So the 25 millimeter crochet hook. Oh, thank you so much. Good to see you. Appreciate you. Uh, thank you for everything you do. Mwah. Thank you for being here. 
right? The 25 millimeter crochet hook is the biggest crochet hook that I have ever used. And I use it when I'm using the jumbo sized yarn. I uh, most recently used it for the floor poof. No, I didn't. I used the 20 millimeter for the floor, floor poof. No, I used you. When did I use you? Oh, I used this on the bear hug blanket. Bear hug blanket was the 25 millimeter because that yarn was just really, really big, really, really heavy. So used this for that. But generally, my dog wants out one second. Bella, go ahead. There you go, baby. Um, yeah, whenever I'm using a jumbo yarn, because it seems to work pretty close to hand crocheting. Um, and it makes the stitches feel so much more loose and fluid, but really comfortable. Oh, thank you so much. You guys are rock stars. Look at you. Look at you guys in the chat. Like I can't even compete. Like you guys are just supporting me like crazy today. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. All right, let's get to the next question. Sherry, I am making some 85% cotton and 15% polyester. Okay. It says no iron, but I want to put an iron on batch. What do you think will work? Ooh. Okay. Let me see if I can understand your question. So you're working with a yarn that is 85% cotton and 15% polyester. And it says no iron, but you want to put an, I, uh, an iron on batch. I am not sure, Sh Sherry, if I understand. Can somebody help me? If you are in the chat. Okay. Oh, there you are, Sherry. I see you. Will it melt? I'm, I'm seeing you, Sherry. Maybe a damp towel because the iron... Oh, a patch. You want to put a patch on it. Ah, uh, and oh, I get it. <laughs> Took me a second. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> okay, so you want to put an iron on patch on your crochet, your crocheted work, the yarn. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I, I wouldn't do it. I would try to sew it on or there's incredible fabric glue that you can use that is permanent. And then you would just put the fabric glue on the patch and then apply the patch and just kind of either hold it there or put a heavy book on it and let the fibers uh, cling to the glue. And the glue is non-toxic. It's, it's fiber or fabric glue. So it's meant for that. Um, it's non-toxic. It's permanent. You can wash it and it doesn't go anywhere. And you don't risk ruining your blanket or crocheted or yarn made item that you're putting the patch on. Uh, I have put uh, an iron <laughs> on a project before and it it's, it it's called killing the fibers. Um, the, the stitches don't, they just, they, they, yeah, they melt in, in a way, but um, sometimes they'll melt completely. Uh, other times they will just, um, they'll become plasticky or firm or they just have this really weird texture. So uh, I would really try to steer away, especially if the yarn label says not to do it. Um, I would steer away from using the iron and try to find another solution. I would either try to sew it on with a yarn uh, or a, a needle and thread, or I would use that fabric glue. So that's, that's what I would do. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't want you to ruin it either, Sherry. That would be so sad. <laughs> so yeah, try that. There's some great options out there. Um, Hobby Lobby and Joann's both carry my favorite fabric glue. It's, uh, uh it's called fast drying. So it's, it dries really quickly. Uh, it's clear, so you can't see it on either side. Um, and it's just awesome. It's awesome. And it's permanent. So you can wash it in however you're going to wash it and it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. All right, cool. Tracy, 
What time do you do your crafters gatherings? Oh, thanks for asking. So I do them Wednesday evenings, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, because I live here in Texas, uh, and Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. So I do it twice a week. Um, so if you miss one or you can't make one, you can always make the other. And I also record the meetings that only crafters gatherers can see the replays. So if you miss one, you can watch the replay and feel like you didn't miss anything at all. Feel completely caught up. So that that's a really cool feature as well. So I would encourage you to at least try it out and see if you like it. But I, I swear everyone that gives it a try ends up sticking around anyway. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And Christine, last week you stated you like doing front post and back post stitches. Do you have a tutorial video for a blanket? Did find your waffle stitch. Oh, good. I'm glad you found the waffle stitch. That one's a lot of fun. So I do have a video for the uh, for a blanket using the front post and back post stitch. Um. I'm just going to say this right now. It's definitely one where I didn't say the right terminology in the video. It was one of my first videos and I was still getting comfortable in front of the camera and I ended up saying the wrong stitch and I tried to make up for it by doing, um, by typing the correct instructions and I, and saying something in the comment section. So two, two, three years later, people still mention to me, hey, you said the wrong thing. I'm like, I know, I know. Um, but it's a great video. I enjoyed that video. It was me making one of my favorite blankets. Um, it's the Rainbow Baby Blanket. Um, and it's worked in front post, double crochet, back post, double crochet stitches. That That's the entire blanket. It's beautiful. It's my favorite stitch. Uh, it works up quickly. And it's so much, it's just so much fun. And so if you can get past the fact that I call it a front loop double crochet and back loop double crochet and not saying post, if you can ignore that part. I, I stand by the tutorial. I think it was a really good tutorial. I just, I'm like, man, talk about like growing pains where you look back at some of your first videos and you're like, okay. <laughs> we will get past this. <laughs> so yeah, definitely check that one out. Oh my gosh, you guys, that is all I have for right here. I still have 13 minutes. So, Hey, how's it going? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you're loving the waffle stitch, Christine. That, that one's really, really cool. Uh, and if you like the waffle stitch, you might also like the basket weave. They're done very, very similar. So, uh, and one thing I love about the basket weave, and I think I'm going to really love about the waffle stitch is manipulating the, the pattern. And, um, instead of doing the count that they, they say in the regular generic pattern, you can absolutely, um, expand it and make something really big or something really, really small. Uh, and imagine a waffle stitch. <sighs> Stick with me there or here. Imagine a waffle stitch that is done where the square shape for the waffle is like here. In instead of being like here, it's like here with a bunch of um, regular stitches in this in the middle and then you actually possibly change the color of the actual waffle so it's like the whole back is one color and then the texture is another color that would look so cool that's a great idea i like that so just taking a simple pattern and manipulating it and like just change changing it by messing with the, the stitches, the number of stitches in the middle of it. It's what my brain does. <laughs> I go crazy with this kind of stuff. Oh, you were thinking the same thing. See, great minds think alike. I, I have a blast making patterns. And honestly, it's funny that recently, this year, most specifically, 
2022 is the year where I'm making a ton of patterns and I'm making them quick and I'm surprising myself with um, the variety of different patterns that I'm, I'm making. And I think once you have done a, 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 a bunch of different crochet patterns, a bunch of different crochet projects, you start to see similarities and you start to see um, I start to see things in shapes like, oh, that's a circle. That's a triangle. That's a rectangle. OK, I see. I see where the increases would be there to make it do that. Um, and then the more practice you have with different patterns, you'll start to see, oh, this is how you would make something bubble or how you bring something in. And and then you can take one thing from one pattern and be like, oh, I could make that over here using this technique over here. And then you create your own. Sorry, I'm just kind of rambling a little bit about crochet pattern construction. But um, yeah, do you have a video for waffle stitch? I would like to try. I do. I do. I do. So on my playlist, I think it's under my crochet stitch playlist. So go to my channel, go to playlists, uh, check out crochet stitches, and it should be under there. Or you could just shuffle through um, all of my videos and you'll find the waffle stitch. Oh, I got another question. Sherry. <laughs> I'm like, Sherry, I haven't, I haven't found it yet. I just said your name. Uh, I would like to try to make movable arms and legs on a bunny. Have you done that before? I have not done it, but I know how it's done. So you make it to the top of the leg or the arm. And then you close it off, close up the top. So you would do your decreases. So it would be closed. And then you come to, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, you can either, bef uh, before you stuff the inner body of the bunny, in this example, uh, you would take the legs, you would attach them to the body and you would sew, take a yarn needle and yarn and go in one and, or just attach it that way. Let it move. You could do, I think what I was thinking is you would go through both this. So inside the body through this leg back inside the body, then through this leg, and come back. And so the legs aren't like permanently tied to one section of the body. They're more connected to each other, kind of like a car, you know, uh, the bottom of a car, the wheels, how um, I don't remember what that is called, but um, how the wheels are connected with one bar. And then you can move the legs, but they're still connected to the body. Um, another way you could do it is um my brain my brain's thinking right now you could do a button where um like the thoughts there but it's not something i've actually done before but i've seen it done before basically you're not you're not attaching the leg to the body itself you're more so um, connecting the, the leg or arm through the body, but it's still movable. You could do a, yeah, you could do a button or something on the outside where you attach it and then rotate it. Let me play with that. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to come back to you next week on Tuesday with an answer to that. Okay. Sherry. Okay, uh, rotating arms and legs. Cool. I do have a question for you guys before I get to life in Jane, Janie's. Um, what do you guys think of magnets on the paws of stuffed animals? So they would like magnet, you know, magnets, they would come together. What do you guys think of that? I was thinking about doing that. So that way my cutesy little stuffed animals could like, <laughs> 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 
Well, let me know. What do you, what do you think of that? Um, so uh, life in Janie's crochet world. Do you have a tutorial for a short sleeve pullover sweater for women? I am confused on a pattern. The amount of rows and the inches on diagram don't match no matter what hook I use and why. Um, I don't yet. I'm hoping to have more clothing patterns um, by the end of this year. I just started making clothes last year, um, discovering the uh, just how it's done. Um, when it comes to arms that are tapered, and I think that's what you're referring to is arms that are tapered because then you're having to follow the, um, the taper, the diagonal line. Um, my first question would be, did the pattern have a swatch guide and are your stitches matching the patterns stitches? If that, if that makes sense. Oh, I love all the emojis, Kathy. That's cute. Um, so I'd first start with that to see if, um, because she's going, or the pattern creator is going to have a, a certain, um, swatch of how big their stitches were. And that's their guide on how they're telling you how to do it. So the best way for you to match up your work to their work is to see if your swatch comes up the same as their swatch by using the swatch guide. And I, I did see somebody talking in here about a swatch, um, a swatch tutorial. I do want to do one. I'll write that down just for emphasis. I have, I've had in mind, I've wanted to do one for a while. Cause a, swatches can be magic. They can give you so much information. Um, but I want to make sure that I do it in such a way that's easy to understand. I want to be very clear with my instructions and be most helpful um, because uh, I might even break down the, the swatch to multiple different, um, multiple different videos on how to use it, how to do it and how it can be used. That way I'm not overwhelming um, with information, overwhelming everybody with information uh, and I, um, I just want to do it right, you know? So yeah, swatches, a lot of people don't want to do them because they are an extra step. And a lot of us just want to get to the project because that's the fun part. Um, but that's how I get a lot of my multiple dimensions, my multiple chains, my multiple rows, my, uh, amounts of yarn for certain projects is the use of a swatch. Okay, um, and then let's go ahead and to end it off, Hope. Okay, I was listening to Tiffany describe how to do the scarf, and I am going to be making it long enough to double it back over the neck. I was wondering how long and wide it would, or it has to be before doing an infinity scarf. I don't have the exact dimensions on me right now. Uh, I would definitely refer you to Pinterest because that's where I, that would be the first place that I would go to look would be Pinterest looking for an infinity scarf chart. Okay. Um, that's, that's where I would go. And if it's not there, then I would go to Google and I would Google infinity scarf chart. And if they don't have it there either, then um, how long it would have to be before doing the, the twist. Because you're, you're asking about the, the twist um, before you join it together. So I, I see what you're talking about now. So you are doing long first, wondering how long it needs to be before you do the twist join. Um, uh, I, I don't have an answer for you. Check there. I'm going to go ahead and check. I will do my best to see what I can do. Uh, and I'll come back with you guys on Tuesday with, with what I discovered, what I found out. Sound good. You guys are incredible. I love seeing all of your emojis. I love all of my members that were able to make it and play with their emojis. Oh, that is my alarm. I am out of time. 
Guys, this was so much fun. I enjoyed hanging out with you and answering your questions and really be, trying to be as helpful as possible. Uh, also talking about my my tapestry, my seven stitch tapestry, wall tapestry tutorial that is going live on Friday. It, it's, it's a long video because I'm teaching you seven different stitches. Seven. <laughs> but it is so much fun. And I just am really looking forward to showing you how to make that because it, it's, a, it's a project that I'm going to be hanging on my walls for forever. Really. It, it's super special. So thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. I will leave you to have the best evening. Mwah! I will see you very soon. Check out my membership program if you had fun with this. Uh, tomorrow, I'm meeting with my crafters gatherers. If you are a crafters gatherer and you are, you are showing some love in tonight's live, I will see you tomorrow. And, um, and I will see you guys very soon for the next one. Bye, guys. Enjoy your evening.